It's uh, great to be here at Fort Riley. It's been a while since I've been back here. It's probably been about a year or so since I was last here at Fort Riley. At that time, I was here in another capacity. The Big Red One, as you know, has fought in almost every major U.S. conflict since 1970, and they've never failed the American people. And it's clear to me from what I've seen this week, they will continue to do an incredible job as they prepare to deploy uh, to Afghanistan. Well, first, uh, we, we have an 80,000 man reduction that really starts this year, 12, and will go through the end of uh, 17. So it's a six-year plan that we have to reduce the force. I would just start out by saying the reason that's necessary is three things. One is we want to make sure we're able to reduce the size of the army while taking care of our soldiers and our families. So we do it the right way. We hopefully do most of it through attrition. There might be some programs that, uh, that we have to force some people out, but we try to limit that program. We also had to ensure that we remain, keep the force, uh, have the right size force to continue our mission in Afghanistan over the next couple years. And finally, uh, we wanted to spread it out over four or five years, six years as it is, to, to mitigate the risk of unknown contingencies that could happen in the next three or four years. So we're doing it very slowly. Specifically to Fort Riley, we have, we have made no decisions yet beyond the first two brigades that will come out, which are coming out of Europe. Uh, one will come out in 13 and one will come out in 14. We are continuing to conduct analysis of where we believe the other brigades, and really it's more than just brigades, it's other units as well. And I would just, I tell everyone, it's an 80,000 person cut. So in some way, every installation will probably be affected by this cut of 80,000. But I would follow that up by saying, you can see the investment that we have made at Fort Riley. Fort Riley is considered to be one of our enduring installations. And it's one of our installations where we feel we have an incredible capacity to train, a capacity to take care of our soldiers, and that will certainly be a large consideration as we go through this process. Uh, so, you know, this is a place, obviously, that we will continue to have a large contingent of Army forces for a very long time to come. Yeah, as, as I look at it from an Army perspective, you know, I have to balance uh, Army civilians, the Army personnel and contracts, myself and the Secretary. And you'll see also reductions in our contractors, and you'll see reductions in our, our, our Department of the Army civilians as well. Now, again, none of those decisions have been made, but that, that's, that will have to occur for us to meet the budget requirements that we have. Well, first off, they have been an incredible support to, to our soldiers and families here. And at lunch, I took a briefing on the family and soldier programs we have. And one of the things it's based on is the, the support and continued relationship that the local community here has with Fort Riley and the assistance that is provided and the, and the, and the discussions that go on between the local leaders and the installation leaders. Uh, it's a long-standing relationship that is absolutely essential for us as we move forward. And I'm incredibly thankful for the population here, for the support that they've given through numerous deployments that we've had through here, but also in support of the Army as a whole, and specifically one of our most storied divisions, the 1st Infantry Division. And we're very proud of the great support that they get here. And I want to thank the people of, of this region for that great support. Um, I, I don't know. I can't answer that question because Congress has to approve the BRAC, so I don't know if it's going to happen. I would, I would be surprised if it had any impact on Fort Riley. Uh, 